In this video, I'm going to walk through how you can spawn nodes from a script, like shooting arrows or other projectiles for your game in Godot Engine. In this video, we're just going to focus on the player and the arrow scenes and not on level building or state machines. I have a new project with just a world node, a camera, and a placeholder tile map for the player to move around in. I've added three actions to the input map. Shoot, left, and right. Make sure your world node is selected and let's add a character body 2D. Call this player and save it as a scene. Now we can go into the player scene. First we'll add an animated sprite 2D. Then make sure the player is still selected and let's add two collision shape 2Ds to the player. The second one, let's change the name to arrow placement. Select the animated sprite 2D and let's go over to the inspector tab. Click the animation drop down, and we will create new sprite frames, then click on the sprite frames. That will open up the sprite frames window. We are going to add three animations. We're going to call them idle, run, and shoot. Select idle, and then we're going to click on the sprite sheet. Our idle animation will autoplay and it will repeat. Now let's repeat the process for run. Our run animation will repeat but not autoplay. And our shoot animation will not autoplay or repeat. Now let's click on the collision shape 2D. We're going to give it a new capsule shape. This is going to be the collision shape for our player. So you can reshape it to the size that works for you. Next, click on the arrow placement collision shape and we're gonna create another new capsule. We are gonna use this to know where to place the arrows when we spawn them. So first thing we're gonna do is disable the collision. Then come to transform, we're gonna rotate at 90 degrees. And let's click on the animated sprite. And in the inspector tab, for animations, make sure shoot is selected. And then we're just going to cycle through the frames until the arrows where we want it to spawn. So right about there. So now we can use this to know where to place our arrow placement collision. We are going to create a new scene for our arrow that is an area 2D. So search for area 2D. And then you can call this arrow. And then to this scene, we're going to add a sprite 2D. Make sure arrow is selected again. We're going to add a collision shape 2D. And again, make sure arrow is selected. And lastly, we're going to create a visible on-screen notifier 2D. Next, let's click on the sprite 2D and let's find whatever projectile asset you're using for this. I'm using an arrow and you're going to drag it to the texture in the inspector. Now let's select collision shape 2D and we're going to give it a capsule shape to be the collision for the arrow. Again, we're going to rotate this 90 degrees and we're just going to get it as close as we can to matching the arrow. Next, let's make sure we save our arrow scene. And then we're going to add a script to our arrow. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is let's click on the visible on screen notifier 2D. Let's go over to the node tab and then click on screen exited signal. 
and then attach it to arrow. So this is a pretty simple script. We gave it a class name of arrow. We gave it an arrow speed as an export variable. In the process, we are multiplying speed times delta to update the position of the arrow. And then when the arrow leaves the screen, we're calling Q free to remove it from our scene tree. We are almost finished. The last thing we need to do is add a player script and go through the logic. So let's go back to our player scene, click on player and attach a script. In the player script, we've given a class name of player. We've created some export variables for the player, such as speed, acceleration, and friction. We've added a reference to our animated sprite 2D, our arrow placement collision shape, and our actual arrow scene. We also have the default gravity that comes with every Godot. project. I've created a Boolean variable called can shoot to keep track of whether or not the player is allowed to shoot. To keep things simple, I've added everything in the physics process, such as handle gravity, shoot arrow, and handling the moving of the character. The handle move function is pretty basic and is just handling the player's movement and which sprite animation to play. The update facing direction function is pretty basic and is just keeping track of which way the sprite is facing. We are adding gravity to the player through the handle gravity function. And lastly, the shoot arrow function. This is where most of the logic you probably care about is being handled. If the player presses the shoot key, and they can shoot, and the sprite animation does not equal run, meaning they can't shoot while they're running. We're going to set can shoot to false because we're about to shoot, play the shoot animation, and then we're creating a 0.7 seconds timeout. The reason we're doing this is I can show you in the player animation. If we go to the shoot, we want the arrow to appear over the sprite animation right in here between frames three and four. So you kind of got to play with your animations to kind of figure out when's the best time to spawn the node. On a side note, if you're using an animation player instead of an animated sprite, you can actually call the shoot arrow function from the animation player using the call method track at the desired frame you want. This would avoid having to sync up a timeout with a playing animation. Next, we're going to instantiate the arrow. We're going to get the arrow sprite. We're going to get the player's animated sprite. And then we're going to place the arrow's position the same as the arrow placement collision shape that we have in the player. If the player sprite is flipped, then we also need to flip the arrow because they're shooting the other direction. And we need to multiply the arrow speed by a negative one to change the direction. Likewise, if they're not flipped, then we would just multiply the arrow speed by one to just keep the same default direction. We are going to add the arrow as a sibling to the player. Then we're going to await the shoot animation of the player to finish. Then we're going to set the can shoot back to true. And then we're going to change the sprite animation back to idle. Now let's test it out to see if it's working. Go ahead and run it. And we can see that our player can run back and forth and they can shoot. And it looks like it's lined up pretty well with where the arrow on the sprite shoot animation is. And you can't really see, but I'm repeatedly tapping the shoot key and it will only shoot once per animation. So I've opened up the remote inspector so you can see that when I shoot the arrow appears and then it disappears after it leans, leaves the scene. So if you watch right here you can see the arrow up here and then when it leaves the scene it disappears. You want to make sure any projectile using the game is being removed whenever it is that you expect it to be so otherwise you'd be filling up this scene tree with just all the arrows or projectiles you're spawning over and over. Well, I suppose.